Absolutely. And of course, we've reached now the the kind of the end of of the show. I've still got a bit of tea left in my uh, in my cup, so I think I'm going to enjoy oh. that last bit <laughs> with our esteemed guest, uh, Sayyid Ali and Nawab, who really appreciate your time. Salam alaikum, Sayyid. Salam alaikum, rahmatullah. How are you, Sayyid? Everything okay? Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, so yeah, this is the the first time that we're honoured to have uh, Sayyid Ali on the show. Um, Honour is mine. For the remainder of, of, uh, of the episode, so uh, we very much look forward to again. This last part of the show is to really wind down um, and look at different random miscellaneous topics within Islam that aren't really covered uh, as much and to really get a jurisprudential view of this. Um, well, actually, I think songs. even in society, we have um, a lot, we obviously go and refer to our books, we have the rulings, but we don't really understand the concept and how to implement them into mm. our daily life. So mm -hmm. I think talking about certain issues, whether they're with stigma, whether they're with just clarity, it's still good to have a, a knowledgeable um, Islamic perspective yeah. from the Fiki. And what are we talking about today? Sorry. We are talking about a, quite a hot topic at the moment, um, and it's unfortunate, it's mental health. Um, so in the general society, a lot is being, um, you know, improvised and, you know, implemented into society, say, support and, you know, networks, etc. So really from a community perspective, Islamic perspective of what we can do, what perhaps are the rulings mm. regarding somebody who's um, got a mental health um, condition. Um, and I think it, it impacts not just the person but the people around us. So we are a community um, where obviously we have our centres, we have close family, friends, um, and it's really to see how we can improve ourselves. So yeah. from really a perspective of Islamic ruling, um, what are the, the rulings related to mental health and sort of a patient that has this condition? Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, I would like to thank Imam Hussain TV for organizing such a program and touching upon sensitive issues, which unfortunately nowadays, um, even in our centers and mm. amongst uh, the community members, is not being discussed very much. Hence, we find uh, certain individuals who are hit with uh, these problems, exactly. they're not experienced or they don't know how to deal or what to do mm. with uh, whether it was family members or friends mm. within uh, their boundaries. Um, when it comes to individuals who suffer from, uh, for example, uh, autism or uh, depression or any kind of mental health, um, Islam comes and looks at each case individually. As I said, as we were discussing this before um, with, the, with the producer before I came into the show, um, each case, for example, may be temporary or permanent. Mm. Some individuals are born with this condition or they, they get it early, early, early on into their life from very young age. As um, we see in the news, in the, in the medical reports, on TV, radio, in the newspapers, there are um, reports of, of children mm -hmm. who get this very early in their life and they are uh, suffering from it at very serious stages. Like autism, that isn't it? That, like autism. autism that yeah. affects them in their education, in their mm -hmm. upbringing, in their, in their livelihood at home. Yeah, yeah. So, um, as I said, Islam comes and looks at each case individually. Now, we want to concentrate on the period where the individual is expected to um, mm -hmm. practice certain religious acts. Of course, yeah. uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy and beneficence, and that he is the creator that created us. Yeah. To, in the hadith, says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is his rahmah and his mercy is, is stronger or closer to uh, the sons of Adam, then the mother who gave birth mm. to that child. So Allah Arham al rahimin when he gave you that health, he expected you to, to, for example, pray five times a day. But there are times that you fall ill. Mm. You catch a cold or a serious cough, that you fall in bed. Now, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or does Islam come and expect you to practice those acts that you were doing before you became ill? Yeah the same way, in the same strength, at, at the perfect timing, as you fall ill? No. There are uh, many traditions and ahadiths by Ahlul Bayt mm. uh, that say that, for example, uh, an angel came down, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advised or ordered one of the angels to go down and, and check out the condition of a mu'min. And uh, the angel came down, noticed that this mu'min, that they usually, in that part of the day, they see him 
standing in his mihrab praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. At that time, on that day, he wasn't there. So he went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said, oh Allah, we did not find that mu'min in his mihrab. What do we do? Do we still write the same thawab that we used to write for him every day? Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yes, the fact that I took away that health from him, which stopped him from practicing that prayer, I expect you to write the same thawab. Really? So can I ask you in there, that person, they're asking about the judgment, what, the, what the, should they write, the angels. But as human beings, we see somebody, they miss their prayer. Um, uh, is that almost, so that's a test for that person. They're, they're not well. Is it also a test for the people around them to not perhaps judge them? To, mm. you know, like we shouldn't be sitting there and say, oh, look, he's missed his prayer. And, you know, are we supposed to show a certain etiquette to the person that's missed their prayer? Unfortunately, this is a misconception that um, the people around the individual, when they see him not getting up to a certain act, they start thinking negatively. Mm. And Islam comes and says, says each person, they are responsible of their own acts of worship. Mm. And what is our responsibility for uh, being alongside them or being around them is to advise them, to support them. Even th for parents, it is said that if they have children at home, they should advise them and support them. For example, for Salat al-Subh or in the afternoon prayers, they should come and advise them and support mm -hmm. them. Yeah. And, and advise them that f if you get up to this act, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you. They should keep some reward. But no way, even normal situations, regardless of that person suffering from mm -hmm. a mental or uh, a, a, a physical disorder, they should not be looked, at, look, looked upon negatively. Mm -hmm. They should be supported very calmly, very nicely, in a nice way. They sh if, if, if we come to a conclusion that this person mm. uh, psychologically and physically is not mm. able to, to commit that act, we should just leave it there. And we you should know not the, push them. The beautiful thing is that, you know, as you mentioned in the beginning, um, is that in the community these things are happening. Mm. Naturally, it's happening around the world. You know, like you're saying, autism, it's, you know, they're saying there's a link to childhood vaccinations, whether or not it is. Um, these are issues that, you know, a lot of people, we don't, it doesn't happen to us, it may happen to someone we know. Um, but the, be the blessing and the positive aspect is that there is a community here to support people. Yeah. And often in the wider society, people are very lonely and they often don't have that support. So we really do need to utilize that, don't we? Um, so from a community perspective, how would you say we should be doing more perhaps? Yes. Um, you did touch upon, for example, the centers being or should be doing events to highlight these issues. Yeah, in in recent um, near history, we see the, the younger generation because um, the elder generation, they're, they're stuck to or they concentrate upon just organizing um, mm. normal okay. traditional mm. events and problems. Yeah. But it, it, comes, it comes down to the younger generation. Why? Because um, they, they grew up in these kind of mm. uh, environments. Uh, for example, if they go to school, if they go to colleges and universities, at the workplace, they discuss with their friends and colleagues uh, these situations. Yeah. So they are more aware. They yeah. follow the news, they, they read the newspapers, they are more aware of these situations. So we see them um, uh, organizing such events. Yeah. They should be encouraged. We call upon all the community centers and all the uh, mosques and the Islamic, play, Islamic centers to organize more of these events. And, and we're not saying they should cancel out all the traditional no. lectures and sermons and, 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 and eulogies, no. But at least once or twice a month because uh, the community comes to this community center because they are seeing that they are benefiting from this yeah. place. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, there are community members who are still afraid or they are shy to come out and ask and speak about this situation. So yeah. it lies upon the community leaders and the community mm. centers to organize and invite in specialists and doctors to actually discuss and put clues uh, on how to uh, combat these yeah, kind of yeah. issues. And also, uh, you know, it could be that there could be a mother who's suffering with a child, a spouse. You know, there's so many scenarios in family life that actually maybe a, a sort of the center having a support network and saying you know come in drop in have a cup of tea come and talk about your problems often we could be isolated in the home looking after this child and you know so, or you know whoever it is in the family that i mean i've got a friend her son's you know he went to law um studied law graduated and then was diagnosed with schizophrenia um at 22 and that's it you know he's now in his 30s and 
to see what she's gone through, but that support is not there because the understanding isn't there. So, you know, we can only say certain things as friends, or, um, but it would be nice to have a sort of community yeah. to... Just further, 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 you know, following on from mm. that point that you even mentioned as well, sometimes a bit that the, the community members are a bit shy to speak up about these issues because they feel like, as you mentioned previously, mm. like they're, they're afflicted with this because of their lack of faith. Yeah. Uh, and because the, the, the elders who are uneducated in this situation, they feel like because the person is missing salah or the person is, for example, committing acts that are just out of the norm, they feel like, oh, this is because he's not close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or he's not close to the Ahlul Bayt. And therefore, when it comes to the community members, they don't want to highlight this issue because they feel like it's a, um, like they have, they, their like upbringing. Lack of faith. No, no, it's, no? it's the parents' upbringing mm. which has caused them to be like that and therefore they don't speak about it. That's, by the way, in in situations where it's not an extreme. For example, we know mm. if you go to the mosque and someone's sitting there like, and you clearly see there's a mental health issue, but there are other ones where you mentioned there are small little signals. So is there anything within the books that, that can possibly list, or do you know any uh, that, could, that could list a, si a list of like, signals to indicate that you know, there could be something wrong here mentally rather than it's a faith issue? Of course. Uh uh, Ahlul Bayt and generally the books of Ahkam, uh, which I advise uh, the dear viewers, the brothers and sisters, to at least uh, sit down uh, every now and then and go through yeah. the Islamic uh, books of, of jurisprudence because they can pick up certain mm -hmm. points that will help them. And nowadays we see the books of Ahkam is not just the opinion of the Alim or the Merja. Yeah. They tend to, uh, as, as I know and have, have read, they tend to put in some ayat and riwayat. Mm to help the person mm -hmm. understand why this alim or this scholar has, has decided that this should be in, in such a way. Um, there are cases where uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the uh, wise words of the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt has uh, revealed to us that a person that starts feeling a bit tired, unwell, they should not uh, force themselves to pr uh, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or do that certain act the same way they were doing in a normal, oh, really? a normal time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the Zerwaya from uh, one of the Imams alayhim salam is that if you see yourself um, emotionally, physically, mm -hmm. spiritually down, mm -hmm. just pray your prayer and go. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you pray your prayer, you do tasbihat of Fatima Zahra alayhi salam, you recite dua, you recite ziyarat ashura, you mm -hmm. recite another uh, supplication from uh, books of dua, uh, you, you, you sit down and speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do munajat. But the day that you see you're unwell or, or spiritually you're down, maybe mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. had happened that affected your level of spirituality, just leave it there. Pray your prayers. Mm -hmm. Maybe do tasbih al zahra Pray to Allah that He helps you uh, in your in your uh, day, and then mm. just go. But the day or the time that you feel no, I am able to do extra, mm. then do it. Because if you do, uh, if you are feeling down, and you do certain act, and you pressure yourself, it's the ruh, it's the spirit, mm. it's the soul. It will feel tired. The spirit also, the soul also also feels tired sometimes. Yeah. So you should not force the soul upon certain acts Interesting. and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another riwayah because we're discussing how people look down negatively on individuals yeah. who are suffering from certain illnesses that uh, the mu'min will come on the day of judgment and they will be given a certain high reward and and he or she will know that I have not committed any acts mm -hmm. of, of, of good or good deeds in my lifetime for me to deserve this amount of, 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 of thawab of good deeds, they will they will be told that because you fell ill for a week or a month or a, a good part of your life, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had decided that you deserve mm. that deed. So that mu'min there and then on the day of judgment would wish that, oh Allah, if I was ill from the beginning until the end of my life, mm. for the thawab that they will get. Yes. So here, this is, yeah. uh, uh, if I can finish this, is that uh, it's encouraging. We should mm. encourage. The speakers, the, the lecturers in the centers and the ulama, they should always encourage family members and community members mm. to not do, do look down upon certain individuals who yeah. go through a specifically health-wise uh, health problem or a difficulty in their life. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them 
to an extent that they wish that they were in that problem for the rest of their life. Okay. Yeah, it's very challenging. And what I was going to just say, sorry, um, that I met a friend who has been ill for about three months, and she was so she was feeling so upset that you know she said, "I pray that these this is rewarding, you know, Allah is mm -hmm. you know removing the sins from me." It's very difficult when you're in a situation that you're feeling so down and unwell that you know it's something wrong with me. So that's a beautiful mm -hmm. narration to end on. Actually, yeah, I think we're out yeah, of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but it's thank you so much. It's Really lovely to hear that. Though. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank Said, you really, so really much. appreciate your time. Um, this is first of many, hopefully. So uh, I've uh, got a couple more sips left on my tea. So hopefully that that will bring up. Better top you up. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> we'll need to top up for for the next episode. But that brings us to a close. Thank you very much um, for the Said. Of, of course, myself and Zara appreciate your time as well, the dear viewers. Um, and inshallah, we'll see you in the next episode of Morning Barakah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.